Hello friends. Today I have a sad topic for you. It's a little different than anything I've shared here. This one is all about the one that got away. I know we all have one. The name of my one that got away was Z50. It's so sad. Today's video is all about the gear that got away. I sold it and I regret it. Sort of. As you all know, we have a lot of gear back here and every year it changes just a little bit. New gear comes in, too much old gear stays, but some old gear leaves. And every once in a while we reach for something and it's not here because we sold it. It may not surprise you that over the years we have sold items that maybe we later wish we had thought more about. I have a story about each of the four of them to share. Before we dig into those items that got away, I wanna thank the sponsor of this portion of the video, KEH. KEH buys and sells used photography gear. We've purchased used gear from KEH and we've sold quite a bit of gear to them. Most of the gear that we are discussing today, we sold to KEH. A few weeks ago, I had a video call with one of the experts there to get a quote. You can also get an initial quote online or by going to one of their events. They have their headquarters in Atlanta, but they also do events all around the country at camera shops and conventions. Our experience selling quite a number of things to them is that KEH offers a fair price for each item. And sometimes we just end up using the funds to purchase gear that is new to us from KEH. <laughs> and I do wanna be clear here that there was no pressure throughout either the selling to them or the buying from them processes. So the regret of selling the gear that I'm about to talk about, it's all on me and on Raymond. <laughs> it wasn't their fault that I sold something that later said, oh, I kind of wish that I still had that. <laughs> anyway, I am an affiliate with them, so I have links in the description for you to buy and to sell, plus codes. If you're selling gear, you can get a bonus added to your estimate. And if you are purchasing, you can get a discount. So check out those links. And thank you to KEH for being an ongoing supporter of this channel. Okay, let's talk about that Nikon Z50 that I mentioned earlier. What's ironic about the Z50 is that Raymond did state that the Z50 is superior to the Z7. <laughs> and then we sold what Raymond at least considered to be the superior camera, and we still have the Z7 right there. And it's truly a great camera. The Z50 is an APS-C Nikon Z camera, like the ZFC and the Z30. And we actually own a Z30, that's also back there. And the Z50 has most of the same features as the Z30, but the Z30 is more vlogger oriented, which helps me a lot while in the field, while also allowing me to take advantage of the Z lenses that I already own. The Z50 does have a viewfinder though, which the Z30 does not. And while this is often not a problem for me, except maybe in bright sunlight, Raymond normally refuses to use the Z30. <laughs> The Z50 is a fast camera. It's very much like the Z6 and Z7, and it truly takes advantage of the features and the capabilities of the Z system. So we no longer have the Z50, but even though we do have the Z30, the Z7, the Z9 that I'm filming on, it is a camera body that we wanted to grab for even after we sold it, especially as more and more lenses for the Z system have arrived, like the trio of Sigma F1.4 prime lenses for APS-C Z mount. I used those borrowed from Sigma on the Z30 when they were announced. And actually Raymond used them on the Z7 too, but I would love to have those lenses and the Z50 for a super compact F1.4 setup with a viewfinder. Next is another item in the Nikon Z system, the 24 to 70 F4 S lens. This was our first Z lens, and we were impressed that the Z7 and the Z6 shipped with this as a kit. It's not often that a bundled lens is constant aperture zoom and compact. We took it everywhere, especially during our early experiences with Z cameras, and the lens performs great. 
not just by a kit lens standard, but by any standard. And then when the 24 to 70 f2.8 S lens became available, we purchased it. The f2.8 aperture is extremely handy. I use it to film most of my videos here in the studio. It's weird that I'm not right now. I'm using the 35 f1.8. Um, the wider aperture and the stunning image quality is wonderful, but it is larger and heavier than mid-range zooms that aren't f2.8. And I found myself not using the f4 lens all that often. So we sold it because we were really trying to pare down our collection here. <laughs> but there have been so many times that both Raymond and I have wished for the f4 lens because it is smaller and lighter and it still provides incredible image quality. I mean, I'm not even ruling out that we could purchase that lens again. Next, a nifty 50 with autofocus. We've owned various 50 millimeter lenses over the years for different systems. And now we own few manual focus 50 millimeter lenses along with a couple of near 50 millimeter manual focus and autofocus lenses for different mounts. They're all great. They're each a little bit different in their own way, which is why they're all in our collection. For example, the fabulous Nikon F mount 50 millimeter F 1.2 AIS, such a pleasurable lens to use, the haptics of it, as well as the image characteristics. Or the Viltrox 50 millimeter F 1.8 for our Nikon Z system. Or the Sigma 45 millimeter F 2.8 for L mount, are both autofocus lenses that are simply solid lenses that we can rely on. And of course the TT Art is in 50 millimeter f1.1 for M mount, and the lens baby lenses are each unique in their own way. A few years ago, we were looking at all of the 50 millimeter lenses we had and decided that we needed to get rid of at least one. <laughs> On the chopping block were all of the F mount lenses. The Nikon 50 millimeter f1.8 series E manual focus lens and the 50 millimeter f1.8 AFD lens the AF means autofocus, and the newer, relative to these other two, Nikon 50 millimeter f1.8 G autofocus lens. We were transitioning from Nikon F mount DSLRs to Nikon Z mount mirrorless cameras. So it was a great idea to cash a couple of the 50 millimeter lenses in for some gear money. I wanted to keep the Series E lens because I like how small it is and its unique image characteristics. So we did get rid of the AFD and the G lenses. And then we, and actually by we I mean Raymond, used some of that money to purchase a Nikon F6 film F mount SLR camera. We still have plenty of F mount lenses for him to use on that and our other F mount film cameras, but it didn't take too long shooting with the F6 for him to say, oh, sure would be nice to have an autofocus 50 millimeter lens for this great film camera, knowing that we had recently sold it to KEH and that in part that sale funded the F6, <laughs> which we also bought from KEH. So the 50 millimeter F1.8 AFD lens is one that got away for Raymond because we don't have a fast aperture 50 millimeter prime lens with autofocus in F mount. Finally, this last item, a camera body, has a plot twist. The Nikon D50, one of Nikon's first DSLRs after the D1 series, the D100, and the D70 came, the F mount APS-C format CCD sensor Nikon D50. The D50 can take nearly any F mount lens and autofocus with ones that require an in-body focus motor as well as the autofocus lenses that don't. The images from a CCD sensor, once considered too digital looking by some, are now considered nearly vintage and film-like by many. In truth, the dynamic range is poor compared to current cameras. It's a six megapixel sensor, which is lower than low end in 2023. The LCD screen is abhorrent compared to the latest bodies on the market. However, it's a small DSLR with great image quality. It writes to SD cards, which was unusual at the time, and it really emphasizes the basics. There's no video, nor many of the creature comforts that current cameras have, but you can take pictures with it and get great results. And virtually the entire catalog of F-mount lenses are at your disposal. So here's the funny story. We had one. 
and we did sell it years ago. We regretted it. Again, this was actually more Raymond than me. <laughs> he seems to have an emotional connection with that camera. <laughs> so when the opportunity arose, we picked up another one quite inexpensively. At that point, times were good with DSLRs. I believe I was using the D300S, which was an incredible body. But I think Raymond was using his D2X the most, which was big and not great for the times. But then guess what? Raymond ended up not really using it. So he sold it. He started pining for the D50 again. I think we had visited a friend who had one and it started the whole thing again. So when he started talking about it again, I said, for the love of all it is holy, just buy one and we'll keep it until the end of time. <laughs> so we did. And we still have our third D50 body and it doesn't really ever get used, but it does sit up here next to our D70. Um, we basically use these as what we call hazard duty cameras. We're talking a river trip or any other really high risk situation where we could like dunk it in the river or something. Could we repurchase any of these four items? Absolutely. We are still trying to keep a smaller collection of gear, which I realize looks pretty silly considering how much gear we do actually have, but truly, how much more do we need? <laughs> and I would rather sell stuff and regret it every once in a while than have too much value trapped back here with gear items that I don't use. I do like the idea that someone out there can give my gear a good home and actually use it. Let me ask you all the awkward question. Has there ever been a gear item that you have parted with that you regret? One that got away? Or did you sell and you're completely over it? See you later. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Thank you to KEH for sponsoring a portion of this video. And thank you for watching.